Okay, everyone, I finally got my parts in. Um, so my next step is going to be, I have these bearings right here. Um, you know, that one's a little loose, and this one's probably fine. But I'm gonna go ahead and change them out. Um, so these are gonna have to be pressed on. Um, I could go rent a bearing puller and do this. However, there's a transmission shop around the corner that takes care of all the street outlaw guys. And I have a feeling that they would be happy to do this uh, and I won't have to mess with it. Because I don't think a bearing puller that like you would rent at um, O'Reilly's will have the depth to get this one off. So I'm gonna run to the transmission shop and see if they will slap these guys on for me. Okay, I am home from the uh, transmission shop. I mean, they busted that out in two hours. Um, I'm very glad I paid them. They charged me a hundred bucks, uh, but that's all right. So, you know, in hindsight, these probably seemed worse off than they really are, were. I can't tell you that the one that came off is, you know, that much looser than what's on there. Uh, and it's not pitted or anything like that. So in hindsight, it probably wasn't worth the hundred dollars to replace them. However, um, you know, I'm glad I did because it's one less thing that I'll have to worry about. These are a wearable item, so it should live a long and healthy life, or it'll last until I break it again. But okay, so the next thing I'm doing, because I don't feel like getting out of the car right now. Is basically I'm pulling these out and that was obviously way easier than it is but they just pry out like that same with this uh, shifter one you just kind of have to pry it out you may pull it to pieces uh, and it may fall apart but just keep digging at it you can even cut them with uh, dikes or something to pull them out and um, another thing you might want to check is if you had anything break make sure that there's no gouging in that little area and watch out because when you turn this thing upside down things like that ring will start falling out and there's some spacers there you don't want to lose and the spacers there you don't want to lose so just keep that in mind as you are working on this there may be bits fall out uh, and you want to make sure you know where they go okay we've got this seal not in place we're about to put it in um, there's the part number you need to pause that 806735210 and we kind of want to get it started it's hard to do one-handed but just get it where it's sitting level and then I'm going to turn that upside down and I'm going to hit that with this mallet to make sure it seats evenly. Okay, that took all of 30 seconds um, to get that in. Not a big deal. There's some nasty, I'm trying to clean this up as I go. It's pretty gross. Um, and the next one I'm gonna move on to is this uh, shifter selector switch bushing. There's two of my spacers that I knew would fall off. Uh, that shifter selector bushing is this and the main reason I'm replacing this is I'm here they're cheap and this thing's been sitting dry for a little while so I think it's worth it to go ahead and replace them so I'm gonna make sure this is clear debris give you a squirt spray clean Feel any bumps? Yeah, it looks like we still got a little crud over here. And I'm pretty much going to do the same thing with this one. Okay, now it's time to put this other, oh, that's probably useful, this other seal uh, gasket in. And this has a metal kind of side to it. And that metal side goes down to keep these uh, bearings in place. Sitting there for your shifter linkage. 
Okay, after some uh, thinking about this, I found that a 17 mil socket fits just inside of that. And that's how I'm going to drive that in without destroying it. Um, so I'm gonna do that this way after some trial and error and let you know how it goes. Okay, that worked a lot better. Um, got that thing in and this should work. So on to the next step. Okay, in doing all that, this piece and this piece fell out. So I'm gonna put this back in, put my shim back in there, and then this piece goes back in, and the flat side is what goes down, and it should just press in. It's kind of a, you shouldn't have to hit on it too much or anything, it just falls right into place. Uh, and now I think it's time to clean up the um, underside the part of the transmission is still in the car. Okay, back under the car. We've got everything cleaned up. And our next thing is to get these needle bearings uh, that go on the shaft back in place. And so what I've done is I've gotten just a little bit of axle grease on my finger. And I'm rubbing it on the inside of that bearing just to make it just to make it sticky enough find where it goes to hopefully stay in place when I put the diff on um, I've got four total um, and if you need those there is the part number top left needle bearings so I'm gonna try to get these on and get them all four to stick. I've only got two on so far. Um, like I said, just a little bit of axle grease. Um, you could also try to use a string and cut it later. I didn't want to mess with that. So um, that's what I'm going to do to get those stick. Make sure you dry off everything from the axle or from, from the shaft uh, and clean it with some brake clean before you try to do this or um, the grease won't help them stick at all. Okay, so I put the diff on and the pin bearings fell out and that failed miserably. So what I've been doing is taking these tweezers, shoving this all the way in, and then using a flathead screwdriver to press it in. I've already got one in the right spot and now I have to do this other side. Once you're done, the outside shaft is pretty easy. So I'm gonna see if I can get this in. Like I said, I'm just gonna slide it in like this. I've got my grease on there. Well, I did have my grease on there. And uh, we'll see if I can get this to actually stick in. This has been probably the trickiest part of the whole project so far. Okay, I got both of those in there. You see like that. Um, and they are sticking. Now the problem will be, is when it comes time to slide that housing on, if they fall off, we're gonna have to do it all over again. So hopefully that doesn't happen. But I'm gonna put the last two on real quick. I'm gonna make sure I'm all dry here and put the other two um, pin bearings on. So scratch what I did earlier, uh, wait until the diff is on before you do it. Um, Otherwise, you're just going to have a bad time. Okay, there's the last pin bearing. Now it's time to prep the tail housing um, and get ready to actually RTV it up to this face. So I've already cleaned this, and before you do it, I would go ahead and re-wipe the bottom because it's kind of still dribbling even after like a week of being apart. So just make sure you are all clean and then I'll uh, show you the next step here. Okay, here we are. I've gone ahead and cleaned everything with brake clean. I've cleaned off these spacers, make sure they're not gritty sounding. Everything is ready for a very, very thin layer of RTV. And this is made for gear oil, so that's what I'm gonna use. Um, they're super specific brands. 
I've never had a problem not using it and you don't need a whole lot you just need a really thin layer uh, if I can even get this stuff to come out so there's not a whole lot to it you just maybe a little bit more than that but you want a pretty thin layer just enough to basically make up for any manufacturing defects in this plate and give it a nice seal. You don't want it oozing out into the transmission. Um, so, real thin layer. You can use your finger, wipe it down real thin, make sure you're good, uh, remove excess. And then also I would suggest dabbing up any type of liquids, either from brake clean or leftover gear oil, uh, so that when you go to mount this thing, liquid doesn't drip out and ruin your seal surface and you have to clean everything again. So I'm going to put a thin layer of RTV on this thing and then continue. Okay, back under the car, we've got our layer of RTV. Be careful, make sure you didn't mess it up getting it underneath the car. Make sure it's all smooth. Then we're going to place our tail shaft or what goes into our um, drive shaft in. Make sure it's seated well. And then we're going to pop this on. Now I made sure the white mark on the diff uh, was facing towards the bottom. And that would be like that. So now we have to slide this, you know, this goes around here, hopefully not knocking off our pin bearings, and then this bearing sits, sorry, one of my lights went out, sits in that hole right there. So I'm going to attempt to get that on because time is running out on my RTV. Um, one thing, this is going to be a pain in the butt to deal with. You have to lift that up while you're balancing everything. So let me give this a go and I'll let you know how it went. And if I fail, I'll tell you why. Okay, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. Was not the worst thing in the world. Um, I noticed I got hung up about an inch from it being all the way seated. And uh, I had to kind of pull it out a quarter of an inch and get like a running <laughs> shove into it. Um, and then after that, she got down. So I'm going to put all the bolts around the housing back in. And uh, that's about, um, about what I can do for now, other than putting some of this other stuff back together. So I would say uh, mission successful so far. Okay, guys. Got everything tightened up, and then I realized these dowel pins need to go in. So I had to loosen everything back up, um, and this guy's just in the way to even get to this. Um, <clears throat> so I had to loosen it up for that dowel pin to go all the way up, uh, through on the top. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and drive this one in too. Um, and then I can retighten everything back up. I'm uh, not feeling a whole lot of this because I can't hold the punch and push in these things uh, in a phone at the same time. So. I'm an idiot sometimes, it happens, but uh, at least I remembered uh, to tell you. So I've got to drive in this last pin and then retighten up everything and then the diff is sealed uh, and done and it's just a matter of putting all the shifter linkage stuff back on and the mid pipe and the transmission mount and all that stuff. So I'm going to finish up this job finally and uh, get back with you when it's all done. Okay, well, <clears throat> got that all done. Um, yeah, don't forget those dowels, or you'll be putting them in later. Um, so, next thing putting back, back together is this uh, shifter linkage. Um, and remember, there's two roll pins. There's a big one, and then a smaller one that sits on the inside of it. Uh, this guy. And make sure you know which side is up. And which side is down because this bit is different sizes. Whew. That's quite a job. Um, thank you all so much for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Um, not every transmission is going to be the same. Some won't have those needle bearings that we dealt with. 
Um, some will have a, a DCCD adjustable center diff, so the center diff will look slightly different. So just be prepared that depending on your making model of uh, six speed, that could potentially change some of the, the ways this looks. Um, but this is pretty much just a basic understanding of how all of this works. Um, and uh, I've got to put the drive shaft on and then wait 24 hours for the um, lubricant, uh, not the lubricant, the RTV to dry uh, before I can fill it up with fluid anyways. So I'm gonna do that and check for leaks and then start on a few other things on this car that I have to get done uh, and then get it back on the road. So thank you all, have a good one.